Hello, and welcome to Look Behind You, the podcast where we talk about the paranormal, the supernatural, and everything in between. I am your host, Jake, and I'm joined by Jordan. Hello. And hello. Terry. Ooh. Did you say hello twice? Yeah, because I realized I wasn't talking into the mic. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you came through pretty clear. I was yeah. talking above the mic. Like the Chad you are? Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, anyways, uh, welcome to the today's episode, or this bi-weekly episode, because I guess... First people... one of the year. Yeah, there we go, we'll do that one. So, uh, yeah, how you guys been? Haven't talked to you guys in a while. I go into hibernation about this point of the time of year. Yeah. Been doing stuff. Cool. What type of stuff, Jordan? Mike. Wood cutting and tearing apart cabinets. Nice. He's a lumberjack. Yes. Do you wear the flannel? No, but I should. You should wear a flannel. You should grow a beard. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't. Grow a beard and, <laughs> or wear a beard and grow a flannel. Uh, like a true lumberjack would. How about... <laughs> We go to the topic. (laughs) No, I want to make you more uncomfortable because this is awesome. You're not just making me uncomfortable. Who else am I making uncomfortable? You and other five people here. (laughs) What? (laughs) Or you and you have to listen to this when you edit. (laughs) True. I mean, this is what podcasting is about. So, so you've been cutting wood for like a job, then? Technically, yes. Nice. So you're not just like honing your lumberjack skills. That way, eventually, you can go fight uh, the no. lumberjack gods. But I have been dodging trees. That's a good skill to acquire. Yes, until you're told to run, and it makes you rethink the direction you're supposed to run. <laughs> so what? What do you mean? So, <laughs> the tree fell and it was coming towards me. I started running out of the way. My dad said, run. And it made me think, am I running the wrong way? <laughs> so I stopped. I looked at the falling tree. And I'm like, nope, I am running the it's right like when way. when a deer hears you hit the brakes, it's like, oh, boy, I got to stand right in the way. Yeah. So you almost did a Prometheus run. <laughs> yeah. Were you running I almost away graduated. From the... You almost graduated. <laughs> well, I hope somebody gets that joke. <laughs> I do, too. Do you know what that is, Terry? Yes. Okay, cool. Cinnamon Sins? Yes. Is yes. that Cinnamon Sins or is that uh? I mean, that's just it's the Cinema movie Sins. overall. <laughs> that is the movie overall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how you been, Terry? Good. Yeah? Locked up in my cave, loathing humanity, plotting their destruction for every abomination of food that I see come out of the stores. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jordan knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Freaking fruity pebbles, maple syrup. What the oh, heck? Oh, yeah. Okay. And then on top of that, before that, it was pumpkin spice cup ramen. You know, if a brand can turn something... Oh, is pumpkin spice a brand? No, no it's, it's a flavor. just a flavor. It's an unwelcome flavor. But who flavor. controls it? Because it seems like there's somebody that controls it because it's targeted at everything. The right American now. companies. American companies? Because it's uh, as far as I know, it's only really big in America and like maybe like Canada. I could see Canada. See, like I'd maybe. be chill with pumpkin flavored ramen. I'd be chill even with cinnamon flavored ramen. It'd be weird, right? But pumpkin spice. Nothing is holy anymore. <laughs> so it's worse. The fruity pebble syrup. Or the pumpkin spice ramen. By far I don't, the pumpkin spice ramen. I honestly don't know. I'm kind of tempted to buy both and just mix them together. So I see the I see I the know. fruity pebbles maple syrup, and I just think of like high fructose like pop syrup. <laughs> I feel like that's what it's gonna taste like. Yeah, it's pure red. It's see through. I just remembered. I believe it was the. Halloween episode we did. Yeah. We had the conversation about the pumpkin spice ramen because I was just about to look up <laughs> pumpkin popularity outside the US and my phone's like, you already searched this up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's been my time. Just self loving humanity until I have to go back to work. Makes sense. How about you? Uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff. 
I started playing Minecraft again. Yay. I watch a lot of anime movies, and I watch a lot of regular movies, too. So, that's cool. Uh, and I played... I got two monitors for my computer, finally. That's, that's nice. Cool. I so. see by the blipping lifeline going across the screen. Oh, that's just my heartbeat. If it ever dies, my computer blows up. Oh, you, my friend, have a very bizarre heartbeat. It's called arrhythmia. At least you have a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> At least I have a heartbeat. But yeah, that's cool. That's going to be fun because now I can edit a lot quicker and easier too. So. You say that, but I'm just going to walk in. You're just going to have Call of Duty going one screen, Halo going on the other screen, Doritos piled up to the ceiling. I thought about playing Minecraft and Escape from Tarkov at the same time today. No, you die in Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would die in Minecraft. That's the problem. You mean you don't want to have three instances of uh, Crisis 3 going? I could do that. <laughs> Crisis 3 is actually easier to run than Crisis 1. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Back when every plant in the game was an entity. Yep. Gosh. <laughs> and you could bust through walls. Kind of. <laughs> that sounds like a familiar game. Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so... Now that we've been rambling for a good six minutes. Uh, it's only been six minutes. Only been six minutes. And we could ramble have... more. <laughs> what do you want to ramble on about, Jordan? I don't know. Lord, he was born a rambling man. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Well, I figured we could get into our topic at least. Topic, topic, Which topic. we're going to be talking about the movie Antlers today. It was released in 2021 which i can see say is last year so yay which actually was like last two weeks year. ago <laughs> i got it before it got me what yes he killed the year before the year I killed, killed the year him. before it got me <laughs> that would make a really weird horror movie well just follow me around so you see the incidents I end up in. True. I could see it kind of being like Final Destination. Yeah, where the year's trying to kill you. Yeah. Instead of death's trying to kill you. Yeah. Which always made no sense to me in Final Destination. Because they were destined to die and they defied death. No, death was trying to kill them. But like, he couldn't just like, oh, you're dead. Yeah, because they were all destined to die horrifying deaths. Plus, yes. also, it's just good for the box office. I guess. They made six of them. Yeah. Or seven. Something. Something. I think like only that. six. Was there six? One, two, three. Yeah, it actually might only be four. I think it might have been only I think four. there's a fifth one in production. Was it? Okay. There was, I think, three of them. And then wasn't the fourth one like a prequel in a way? Because I've never seen any of them. There's three of them. And then the last one, I think, was a prequel because it was about the group that was about to get onto the plane that the first cast got onto. Oh. There are at least five Final Destinations. Cool. Anyways, we're talking about antlers. Yes. yes. Antler. Is Ant it antlers? Antlers. 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 Anyways, this is a movie, obviously, that was produced in 2020. It was debuted in 2021. I'm trying to release in 2021. We could call this Moose Simulator the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could. We really could. That That's how you want to see an edit of this movie where they just take out the main monster and just switch it out with a moose. I just want to see it with the moose from Invader Zim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just this bug-eyed cartoon moose. Um. So, <laughs> like, looking up on IMDb, just to kind of get a structure of what's going on. Their tagline says drama, horror, mystery. And then their um, little explanation thing is in an isolated Oregon town, a middle school teacher and her sheriff brother become embroiled with her in enigmatic student whose dark secrets lead to a ter terrifying encounter with an ancestral creature. Well, if that totally doesn't confuse you, what the heck we're talking about? We're talking about a Wendigo movie. Bum, ba, da, da. I don't remember that scene being. <laughs> I don't remember. All right, I'm looking through the pictures and IMDb. Look. Yeah. 
But anyways, it stars uh, people like um, Carrie Russell. Um, I think that's Jesse... Clemens. Clemens. Really, the only person I remember being, or I know of, was um, Graham Green, right? Grin. Yep. Green. Green. Graham Green. Warren Stokes. Yeah. He played Warren Stokes. I think he's also played in a couple other movies. Yeah, he usually plays in some horror movies. Yeah. But yeah, basically, what this is about is the very basic premise obviously there's gonna be spoilers for this and it's a brand new movie too so brand new spoilers yeah but there's a boy that has a father that is a drug dealer yep or at least a drug creator he's a meth lab a meth chemist. lab a yep. meth labby e meth labby meth labby he's, he's a saying, chemist what was the second one you said labby Labi. Labi, okay. He's a math labi. I heard <laughs> math labi. I heard rabbi for some reason. And I'm like, what? <laughs> hey, some people like drugs as their um the Holy Spirit, so <laughs> But yeah, he's a uh, meth lab yes. chemist basically. <laughs> and what happens is they're in a mine in Oregon. And they're they're in the mine in Oregon doing their meth lab stuff. Yep. And they get attacked by a creature. And then three weeks later, we jump to where the boy is going through his normal time of going to school and stuff. And this is like a really... The boy is played off as like a really creepy... Like something's wrong with the boy. Mm-hmm. Very like, um traumatized. Yes. Like something ha- bad happened to the boy, but he's trying to act normal. And there's a teacher that just comes into the Oregon town. So, of course, it's the nosy out-of-towner person correct you she came back to the oregon town yeah she came back because her brother and her stayed there and there was problems in the family in the family mother died anyways the boy for the last three weeks has had been helping slash feeding his father and brother that were locked up in the attic the attic because it turns out that the creature that attacked the dad did not get eaten, but was harmed, or basically, the boy kept on saying that he's sick. I think, and this kind of goes more towards the end of it, I think he actually killed the Wendigo. I think so, too. Because of how the end plays out, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Yeah. Which would be pretty it's insane that he was able to kill the Wendigo with just a gun. Well, if you... Well, yeah, we can talk about it later, but yeah. there's a... I think... There's a very easy way to explain it. But anyways, so it turns out that the boy's dad is infected with Wendigo stuff. Um, Wendigo stuff. And her, his brother is also as well. Um, so he's trying to help them by feeding them rotten animals and stuff. And then the teacher gets nosy about it and is thinking like maybe like the boy is getting like abused by his father and stuff because his father is a drug dealer. And he was writing some creepy pictures yeah, and telling some creepy, creepy stories. Which kind of relates back to that old tale that we were talking about when we did our Wendigo episode about the yep. boy and the Wendigo. The boy that... I thought yeah, that was that, the Wendigo. Yeah, I thought about that through the whole thing, and then yeah. I realized who the boy in that story was in this movie. It wasn't the main character. It was the Main other character's boys. brother. Yeah, that's what Because, kind of, at least I think the brother wasn't infected with the Wendigo. It's not like a zombie where they're infected when they get attacked. I think what happened is the dad just kind of took the son, as you see, kind of halfway in the movie. He just kind of grabs him into the attic. Well, you do hear the other brother, the main character brother. Um, yeah. I think his name's, is it Lucas? Yeah, we should learn their names. I believe Lucas, Lucas is the main character. Lucas Weaver is the main character. And then Julia is the, um, the, the teacher. 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 And then the... Father is Frank Weaver, I believe. Yeah, Frank Weaver. I'm trying to look for... Scroll down just a little bit. The sheriff guy? He's not much in there. The sheriff the sheriff dude should be in there. He's... um. Where did he go? Oh. Jess, Jesse. Jesse Pons? But Pl- his name Plemons. is... Plemons. The, in the movie, is Paul. Paul. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, Paul okay. Meadows and Julia... Um, Julia Meadows is the sister and brother. Then you have Lucas Weaver, which is 
kind of the main no, one he, of the main he, characters. He is the main character. Yeah. He's the son that's helping his father and other brother. Um. Anyways, so the dad, uh, Frank, is locked up in the attic with his other, his younger son, which is Aiden, mm-hmm. and then Lucas is going throughout his normal life, but also trying to feed them and yep. take care of them because he just, he thinks they're just sick. Yeah, because the one of my favorite parts of the movie is the dad actually locked himself in the attic that because he was becoming a Wendigo and he could kind of feel it. So he's like, I'm sick. Don't let me out. Yeah. That's a pretty classic trope in most yeah. like plague or viral type horror movies. Like you see that a lot in zombie movies as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess where, so. Like, the person's like, I'm going to turn into a zombie. So I'm going to lock myself in here because I can't kill myself. I don't want you to kill me while I'm still human. So I'm just going to lock myself in here. And then eventually I'm probably going to eat you, but it's fine. So I'd be like, <laughs> let's make a death maze and put me in it. <laughs> and that's how you get the Minotaur. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> or Maze Runner, kind of. Okay, those were genetically engineered bugs. Oh, yeah, they were. Oh, wasn't the the maze designed because they're testing the kids? Yeah. Because the kids were like... They weren't able to turn into the zombies or whatever. Yeah, they were immune to the flare virus. Yeah. So anyways, eventually, uh, Julia is trying to help Lucas. Investigate what's going on with him, yeah. And she calls on the aid of the principal, which is Principal Ellen. She goes to the house to check up on the father. uh, Talk to him about the kid. And ends up, of course, in all horror movies, going up to the attic because she hears noises Yep. And that's when the father finally snaps, kills her. Yeah, gets enough to eat, and then becomes the becomes actual full-grown Wendigo as they depict. Yeah, and they do this in a really cool way. Yeah, like a metamorphosis. Doesn't transform, but more gets the he like sheds his like human form, and like the Wendigo literally explodes out of him. Yeah, it, it's I actually a cool. really cool scene because like the horns come out of the mouth and it just kind of explodes from there yeah that was interesting then like afterwards when they find the teacher yep. or the principal in the attic and then you see just like the the husk of yep. the human body, i was like oh that's interesting that's kind of cool in the sick demented form of horror in horror movie, movie yep. cool sense yeah and that gets to the point where as soon as he turns into the wendigo he actually breaks out of yes. course the principal left the door open and he breaks out and is now free in the town. Yes. And then that's kind of where we'll leave it here. Because I don't want... If somebody doesn't care for spoilers, I don't want to spoil the end of the movie, per se. Yeah. I don't think we really have to go into it. Because it's basically just classic horror movie. Yeah, we don't Anyways. have to hit the beats. But I think we could... I definitely want to cover the very end of the movie. Okay. Well, let's, we don't have to talk... We can go on to the very end of the movie, then. Let's do that. Yeah. So basically, a bunch of stuff happens, and at the end of the movie, they're back in the mine because the Wendico took the infected son, um, Aiden, and also Lucas went there because he's kind of traumatized and wants to be with his father and brother. The dad actually kidnapped Lucas back to the mine. Yes. He took his two kids with him back to the mine. Anyways, they're there, and the Wendico's there, and then Julia, the teacher, ends up getting there, following them. Yep. And fights the Wendigo, which yeah. is like the weirdest scene I've ever seen because all the Wendigo legends kind of say that like don't you don't mess with a Wendigo. Yeah, well, this lady had like level twelve barbarian class going. She <laughs> yeah, had she did. level twelve <laughs> plot armor because that yeah. Wendigo did not put up a fight. But they talked about that because yeah. the Earlier Native in the American mo- Indian guy. Earlier in the movie, the previous sheriff, head sheriff, which was Warren Stokes, was a Native American, I believe. Yep. I believe that's how it was. He was the previous sheriff. Yeah, he was, because they asked him about some of the murders, if yeah. he had seen anything before. And Plus, he reported the first body. Yes, yes, he did. Um, he tells the story of the Wendigo and how to defeat the Wendigo. Yes, which... It, he goes into pretty classic explaining what a Wendigo is, but then they go into the fact that the Wendigo in this story, and mm-hmm. in like some Native American legends, is a spirit 
that can be transferred from body to body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So kind of like he kind of refers it to as like a guardian spirit or their ancestral spirit. Yep. Yeah. And so he says, whoever, whenever a Wendigo dies, the spirit looks for a new host. Looks for a new host. And that's why I say, like at the very beginning, when they're the fathers attacked in the mines, is that he killed the Wendigo that would attack them. Yes. Because if he killed the Wendigo, then he would be in the state to be possessed by the Wendigo. Right, because he was hurt. He was wounded. Yep. Kind of like at the very, very end of the yes. movie where... There is one little plot hole, I think, in this, unless it was meant to be that way for another movie. Yeah. So when the former sheriff, Warren Stokes, finds the remains of a person in the woods... He only finds the lower half, and they say they find the other half in the mines. So that was the dad's uh, accomplice in the um, drug making. Oh, my. I did not realize that. Because So does that mean there was a, like... A set of basically an adventure of him fighting the Wendigo through the woods or something, and he kills or it at some point. This was the previous Wendigo. So the Wendigo killed the man in the woods, dragged the body to the mines. The dad and his accomplice with the drug dealing oh, was in that the mine. The Wendigo attacked them. That could be, but the way that they presented it. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Jordan was right. That yeah, makes yeah. the most. That sense. does make sense, but I mean, just the way that it's presented. Yeah. But at the same time, then, how come no one ever noticed that there were people disappearing around the town? Oregon, people disappear all the time. True. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. (laughs) Also, just the Oregon woods. Mm -hmm. That is actually kind of a plot hole. Because, like, when the dad gets released, they're finding dead bodies all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. At least they portray it like that. Yeah. And if there was a Wendigo up there in the mines already before, then they should have already been finding dead bodies all over. Yeah, because I was under the impression that him and his accomplice accidentally let it loose by tampering with the charms that they found in there. Oh, yeah. They or they woke it up. Because the native... the That does make more sense, because when they, when they find the mine at first, they have all the Native American charms and stuff hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, and then the, the sheriff wards. did say something about that was keeping something yeah in there and he said we are not going any further yeah but the other guys did so that probably yeah the other two the father and the the drug dealer yeah uh did which is probably what released the wendigo in the first place yeah so that does beg the question was there a battle before that i think so probably something basically set up for another movie potentially well, the very end is set up for another movie, yeah, theoretically. It is, yeah, it could be one of those movies that could just keep going if they wanted to. Oh, yeah, this because, movie could just go and go and go. So basically how they had to kill the Wendigo in this one is they had to rip out the heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is pretty classic for most movie horror movies or like most monster movies where you have to remove the heart or remove the head or something. And it's kind of close to already the Wendigo legend. Yeah, where you have to remove the frozen heart. Mm-hmm. But in this one, it was a burning, burning heart. heart. Yeah, which... I think they did that for, because it was um, Del Toro that did the production of this, mm-hmm. and he likes doing really cool like production effect things. And they had this constant like ash or spark effect going on yeah. Yeah. whenever the window goes around. Well, and there's some old Wendigo legends that I've read before, not very many, and I think they're just more, I guess, Englishized or Americanized stories of it where. Wendigos are portrayed as like a creature that like has burnt limbs or like its feet are burnt off, so it just kind of floats. Oh, oh yeah, I do remember hearing this, like one of the original Wendigo stories, where um and that's why they're the sick. people that were being tormented mm-hmm. by the Wendigo. This was more of a mental Wendigo, mm-hmm. or they were being lured by the Wendigo. <clears throat> they kept on saying whenever they'd finally succumb to the Wendigo madness, they would say, "My feet, my feet's of fire." They fly me into the sky. Yeah. They burn. They so burn, I think burn. that yeah. might have been a kind of a callback. A melding kind of of it and a callback to it. So yeah. some things portray it as a creature of fire and ice, basically. Yeah. yeah. The coolest part, and I actually want to find this short story and read it, is this whole movie was based off of the short story, The Lost Boy. Quiet Boy, I thought. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe yeah, it was Quiet, Quiet Boy. boy. Lost Boys because is about like when, when, when the son <laughs> is at school and stuff, he's really quiet and kind yeah, of recluse. Yeah. 
Thanks. Now I really want to see or make a movie about vampires fighting a Wendigo. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. So this movie, and if you guys, it's not our best episode. We've talked yep, about the redoing quiet it a couple of times. But if you guys want to know more about maybe more traditional Wendigo stuff, you can listen to our previous episode on that. I think it's like episode two or three. Two. Maybe four. Summer's in there. It's, two it's, or four. it's down there. It's one of our first episodes. Yeah. And we kind of dive into the original Wendigo stuff. Some more like the original stories. But this movie was really fun. Um, it was okay, yeah. I After reading some of the comments about it, I get where the movie is trying to go. Yeah, I definitely get be, where it's going. It's meant to be more of a psychological like suspense movie than just a horror movie. more of a thriller honest all right so i really liked the movie i liked it a lot as a monster movie it's yeah. what i want it wasn't like it wasn't scuzzy in any way yes no um well i mean there was a little gore in it but nothing like ridiculous there was the weird scene with the uh sister's flashback yeah i but, think that was more meant just to be like a that was a horror, like psychological. Yeah, that that thing. was to hint to her background without having to show anything. Yeah, it was just a weird flashback. I yeah. liked the creature and everything. It the felt design was awesome. More though, like a werewolf movie. Yeah, than what the Wendigo should have been. Yeah, That's what I was hoping they wouldn't do, and I I feel like they didn't get it quite. Like you're yeah. saying, throughout the whole movie, I was thinking how dumb the Wendigo was. Yeah. I honestly, to me, I'm a little disappointed in the fact of I was hoping there was going to be a little bit more Native American lore. Yeah. Something like that. And there wasn't. Yeah, that's one thing I was kind of disappointed in. Definitely. Um, I really like one thing I like about the Wendigo stories a lot, especially about creepypastas and stuff. Is they always make the Wendigo out to be like the most deadliest predator in the woods. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be. The smarts of a human, but without any good in them. They're their ultimate evil and ultimate hunger. All they yeah. want to yeah. do is consume. Where the, what makes them different than a werewolf per se is werewolves are just driven by bloodlust. They're not yeah, necessarily right. blood the smartest lust or creatures. instinct, mm -hmm. depending on what they're being portrayed in yeah. a show. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't like the Wendigo and Antlers is he was he wasn't like just stupid, but he wasn't smart. He was really slow. Yeah, really slow. He and like I said, like we said earlier, I a lot of it kind of seemed like it was like a moose. Yeah, it really did feel like a moose. Like it was just like a giant moose, moose like simulator. When they're movie. attacking the sheriff and his deputy in the shed, and all he was using is like his horns. He was and just stuff. ramming the shed with his horns. Yeah. Other than when he speared the deputy through the chest with his claws, that was with his horns. I thought that was with no, his claws. No, he just horn. rammed him with yeah. his horns. Yeah, I was Literally like... both scenes, because we were laughing about this, because all they did is walk up to the tool shed where the <laughs> one sick boy is hiding. And both times, the Windico was just able just to go up behind him and just like hit him in the back. I guess that does show a little bit of smarts with this one, because he uh, sent his one son that was trapped with him in the attic yes. into the box into the shed to yes. lure the people to him. I did really like that. I did, too. I liked that a lot. But... It should have, to me, the way it should have been is like, all right, killed the first guy. Hide the body or take the body. Yeah. Out. Come back, do it again. No, that was actually really good idea because he left the first body there so that way they had immediately run to the shed. True. Yeah, because the kid wasn't saying anything when the sheriff showed up. That is true. The kid was there to keep them there. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah to try to figure out. Yeah. I just, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I've never seen in a movie, save for maybe, like, the initial, like, plot switch for basically a character to camp out for the victims. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, no, the design was really cool. I liked it. It definitely lent to, I guess, the more modern depiction of the Wendigo. The Wendigo. The antlers. Yeah, I really did like that version of it and i but, liked how they kind of explained it that it was more just a spirit yeah possessing a body so of course it transformed the body they kind of yeah. also had the two different versions of the wind go in it at the same time they did because when the dad before the dad went through the transformation he was in the attic 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 yes attic and he was more of the human starved gaunt human yeah 
long limbs, bald face, kind bald of lips head. that were like yeah. being it, eaten and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. So. I did like too because I know when we've done research on Wendigos before too, and I think this is kind of where the boy was involved in it is when the Wendigo has a particular, I guess, favored target. It does inflict starvation on them. It yes. makes it makes them ill, basically, yep. so yep. that they can become a Wendigo. Yeah, and um, I think we'll talk a little bit more about that in more of the in depth part of the movie. Yeah, like the really we're... cool um, Easter eggs about it. Yeah, talk um, about like the um, story links. Yep, but we'll do that after the break. So okay. we're gonna do a quick break, and then we'll be right back. So zoom. See you. See you guys. And we're back. Hello. So, now we're going to dive into more of the little details we saw of the movie. So, I think we did a good, pretty good cover of it. Um, um, yes. As a note, me and Jacob has have only watched this once. And I, I know I, Terry I, I watched a couple reviews of it. Yeah, I watched reviews I, before. I, I am guilty of watching a lot of reviews before I watch a movie. I've only seen the trailers and the movie. Once. So I, if I miss anything. Well, yeah, we're just seeing what we notice. But uh, this is. I will say depth. this. I, I loved the fact that Guillermo del Toro was involved in it because it does explain why it had such an atmospheric setting. Yes. The atmosphere was awesome just in the movie. That sleepy, dreary yeah. town. Which is actually kind of a Easter egg because now I think about it, like the Wendigo legends have always been known to. Like when the Wendigo is around, it is usually brings in like depression and insanity and stuff around it. it. Normally, it has yeah, a of it. It normally travels around in the cold regions. Yes, like where where it's where it's very bitter and cold. Well, I you don't also have to notice that earlier in the movie they're saying that a lot of people are losing their jobs. Yeah, yep. and there is a lot of hunger and stuff going around. So if you noticed in one of the scenes by the ice cream shop. People were in line mm -hmm. to get food. Yeah. Yep. All ice cream. No. No, well, just, that was to, get, the ice cream just to get food. The grocery store is next to the ice cream shop. <gasps> oh, I thought they were all and just piling also, into the ice cream store because the kid was looking in because he was so hungry. No. And there was a huge line in. Well, they it. had shut down the coal mines mm -hmm. and had, I wish they didn't fade it out. They had, were talking about possibly reopening the mines. They were talking about opening up a new type of mine on top of the mountains, a mountain coal mine at the peaks, which is kind of a, at least I think it's kind of a nod to the video game Until Dawn. I, that was a coal mine up in the mountains, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, they were up in the mountains of Washington, and where the Wendigo really started, and that was there was a coal mine disaster that happened where 12 coal miners were supposedly got trapped and died, mm -hmm. but actually in the story they all got turned into Wendigos. Oh, okay. And they were up in the mountains. How many Wendigos do you fight in that game? None. You don't fight them. But isn't there a, a guy with a flamethrower? Yeah, he doesn't actually kill any. He's just there, I think, to deter people. Yeah, um, he's up there. He's a Native American up there fighting the Wendigos, but he actually ends up, spoiler alert, he dies halfway through the oh, game. He did. Dang. Trying to save the stupid teenagers. Ah. Yeah, yeah I didn't notice that. I would have liked it, I think, a little better if they would have covered that a little bit okay. more. In this. Yeah, I can definitely see where the show had suffered from time constraints because, in all reality, the plot, the layout, and everything could have went a little bit longer. Yes. Yeah, it was only an hour and a half movie. I would have loved to seen a more of a cat and mouse chase. Yeah, of, like the sheriff and like the whole sheriff team, like trying to stop like the Wendigo from like hurting certain or people or trying and to stuff. figure mm -hmm. out what was going on. Yeah, instead it was just yep, they did. Yeah, another quick thing that I. Found, I thought the movie kind of missed is it didn't take them long just to find out that it was the Wendigo. Yeah, they like just drove to the old sheriff's house and it's like, yeah, it's a Wendigo. Yeah, the, <laughs> the pictures are a Wendigo and that's what happened up there where like a lot of times in like the movies like that, there'll be a monster killing things in the woods and the sheriff's like, well, there's being bodies eaten. It's a ravenous bear. Let's start up a bear hunt. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like well, it was missing that bear hunt. There wasn't a 
I guess, a, what usually is on horror movies, because usually horror is paired with suspense mm-hmm. and things like that, there was no suspenseful build up to anything. There was no real yeah. tension, per se. It felt more like an adventure yeah. movie than yeah. a horror mm-hmm. movie. Felt more really like a psychological thriller. Eh, usually, psycho- felt the thriller. Usually, yeah. psychological thrillers are revolved around really turning the knobs on the tension and really kind of stressing the viewer. Kind- Where this was not, I didn't feel any tension. Or I also anything. didn't really feel much development other than the monster itself going from human form to Wendigo form. Yeah, like not a lot of the characters actually had development development in them and that's not to say they were bad characters no. like all the characters were enjoyable but no i definitely agree with jordan i think the characters were way too rushed yeah like yeah the, they the used teacher a... the brother they could have had a little bit more of like a back and forth a back and forth maybe like a little bit of like drama going up in there instead it was the sister you hate me brother no i don't yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is actually a very common like when they had that type of trauma, it's a very common thing for the yeah, victim to go through that. This was right out the gate when the yeah, pull it was. up is yeah, it was. in the beginning. You hate me. Uh, no, yeah. no, I'm I don't. Just, I'm just busy. I got to go to work. Yeah. I didn't say you had to move. Uh, but yeah, I, I really would have loved to see more in depth in the characters. I really wish... That this would have got the two hour treatment. It I, I kind of wish it went three. It didn't need the uh, extreme. That's a little long. It didn't need the extreme of it, but it needed a little bit of the Stephen King touch. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, like, here's a little bit of unnecessary detail, but at the same time, it makes you like or loathe the character. Yeah, also, there wasn't much exposition. One thing it was really missing is points of view just from the monster. You know, in all monster movies, where we have those scenes where it's it hunting down one. the one victim. Yeah. What scene? When the deputy went to the sheriff's and his sister's house before they got attacked in the shed, yeah, you could see the monster watching him through the bush. Yes, you could. That's the one scene. But I'm talking where we have a random guy in the woods, Incident. and then you see the monster like tracking him down and yeah. hunting him. Yeah, that's what we are missing. Usually, a monster movie has about three to four of those. Yeah. We didn't see many of its kills. We didn't, we which heard I'm about okay them. with, because that kind of adds into the suspense of it. Mm-hmm. Right, but they could have had just, like, incidents. They don't have to show anything, but well, they could have the incident and then cut at that right yeah. before it goes. When they the have the... when but, they reveal Like, they did the, the, the principle. When they reveal the monster so early on, like, what it is, they should have had a little bit more of its kills. Because there's no, there's no reason on trying to hide it. Well, everyone knows what it is. And that's yeah. that's where it should have been more suspense. Because the suspense yeah. a lot of times is like, all right, let's take a mystery. Let's go. We could wind way back to, oh, I don't know, a um, Alfred Hitchcock. You know who the murderer is. You know they did it. You know how they did it. But how's the character, main character going to find out? Yeah. So that could have been the thing. Is like, you know the monster. You, you're seeing what the monster is doing. Yeah. But how are the heroes going to stop it? How do they find out about yeah, it? Yeah, and that's kind of where most monster mo- movies go. Yeah. yeah. Is you have, like, the werewolf, where you have the... Uh, most of the time it's werewolf. Most of the time monster movies are werewolves. I'm trying to think of another non Zombies are technically monster movies. Yeah, but in zombie movies, you don't really have the zombies, like... Taking out never, a single person. I've never seen a zombie movie, honestly, where it was the incident starting. It's always just, yep, here it is. R- yeah. Run and gun. Draw. No, um, there's a lot of movies where it, the zombie apocalypse starts. I believe one oh. of them's like Record. Right. Record is one. And then the one that's also... Because there's two movies that are like exactly the same. Yeah. There's Record and then the other one, which you can't remember the name, where they're trapped in the apartment building. Yeah. Also, World oh, War um, Z. Home Sweet Home? No, I don't okay. think it was that's, Home Sweet Home. Yeah, because that's not zombies. That's monsters. That's a Korean drama also. Yeah. yeah. Not drum. Korean. It's a webtoon too. Yeah. But no, like... Oh, I, yeah, I think I've read that one. Uh, what's another monster? But just, just the general formula for yeah. a monster movie mm-hmm. is a lot of times you either get the... You don't know what it is and you find out with the main characters or you know what it is in a sense. You see it and stuff. Yeah. 
and you figure you get to see them figure out the yep. plot which i guess is kind of cool that they broke the mold but i kind of wish they would have broke the mold but still gave us that content yeah well of, i mean like trying to make the monster out to be an actual like threat yeah because i mean really in the legends and stuff the wendigo is a really cruel and sadistic creature it likes to toy with people yeah it does it likes to mess with their heads and it didn't have any of that yeah and i really wish i would have saw that like maybe people like like maybe like not even the monster killing people like maybe the monster like stalking somebody's house yeah like mm -hmm. have like a couple where they think they're going insane because a monster's like going around their house and stuff all mm -hmm. night i do and like having them come getting the like, closest you really got with that was the deputy outside the sheriff's house kind of walking around yeah even then that was just more it's just being there rather than yeah well before he gets attacked people. He, he, he constantly hears the noise, which eventually leads him to the shed. But that's the closest you get to that. The other thing I think they could have done, and I don't, I don't mean to nitpick this in any way, but what really would have set the mood is if it was winter. Yes. Yeah. Instead it was of like, like that spring wet... or fall or something yeah. during this. It was early fall or late, late winter. Winter time would have really set the tone. Honestly, I think it probably would have set the tone too if it was set back in like 1800s or something even. That... I disagree with that. I think it was good. I think they needed to actually tell you what year it was though. Yeah. Yeah. I seen in a comment on the video when we were looking through it, somebody was like, well, I seen something in the background and they did all the math of this. It means it was done. And this happened in 2016. Yeah. Yep. Which is really confusing because all this, it, it's made to be like in present day, but all the items and stuff strewn are like from the 80s and yeah, 90s. Yeah, the flashlights they're using are like the big, bulky, yellow flashlight Which, ones with just to, not even the special to LED. To be fair, bulb. it is an abandoned mining. Or it's not abandoned. It's an old mining town. Yeah, that, but... But she grabbed it from the sheriff's car. Yeah, but they might not have seen any need to update stuff. I yeah. mean, it's a sleepy town. That, yeah. That's kind of that thing with horror movies, too. The sleepy town never sees need to improve. Well, it's like, look at our town. There's no modern stuff there. No, there's no modern stuff, but you would ex at least expect more of like a mag speak, light flashlight. Speak for your town. We got a subway. <laughs> <laughs> like... It would have been made a little bit more sense if the flashlights were like mag lights. Just kind of that long one where it's not the LED, but it's still that white bulb. It, that Instead could of the been, big plastic. That could have been done lights. on purpose too, though, because Guillermo del Toro likes to give his stuff a kind of timeless feel. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, yeah. Also, it's like people don't really complain about the flashlights being used in a horror movie. A lot I of times. do. <laughs> you do because you got a weird thing for flashlights. No, it's because it confused me on what time it was. But just think, you uh, know, who's involved in it, that makes sense because yeah. he likes to make things feel timeless. Unless, of course, he's doing like Pacific Rim and it's like giant <laughs> robots because I like giant robots. Like, with I'm going to be a weeb for two seconds here. Give me a break. I guess with the flashlight <laughs> thing that with pretty me. pretty much is what Pacific Rim yeah, was. Yeah. I guess with like the flashlight thing, it's not just the flashlight. It's the flashlight with the houses, the car. And... Oh, yeah. The police car. It's just like you have a flashlight from the 80s and like a Dodge Charger from now. now. <laughs> okay, that flashlight wasn't from the 80s. I know. That flashlight was the oldest was 2010 flashlight. Really? Yes. Because I remember having one of those flashlights when I was seven. You're not from the 80s. <laughs> no, but that was before 2010. Barely. We demand <laughs> eco-friendly batteries. Also, <laughs> the, the cop car that was in there was a Dodge Charger mm -hmm. from 2010. No. That so was at was least a 2016 in the early Dodge Charger. If we're going to argue about this, uh, Chargers haven't changed their body style since, like, 2000. No. Since the first Transformers movie. That's what started yes. the style yeah. because of yep. Bumblebee. Yes. No, that's a Camaro. Okay. That was a Camaro. The Camaros haven't changed their body styles either. There is the Transformer that is the cop car that is the Dodge Charger. That's right. But because of Transformers just... with their special editions, it's like it started there and that's what they never and changed. And I am just assuming it was a Dodge Charger. It is a Dodge Charger. But it does make Assuming sense because is. early 2000s, it's got that kind of timeless feel. Yeah. All in all, though, in short, like getting back to the actual, actual creature topic. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I went on I a like, tangent of cars. And I liked how they lights. did the thing of the kid trying to save his yeah. his dad and his brother. It, I thought that was a little... I get the whole idea of it being like traumatic and like him being really attached to his dad. But like... It was... It felt... It could have been... Way too much. Like... I get it when the dad was just sick. Yeah. But then the dad becomes something that is otherworldly. Right. And, and he's still like, oh, it's my dad. Yeah, rather than going to the teacher and be like, something's wrong. Yeah. Which, that should have probably been where that went, where it kind of, I guess, made it a little darker. What I'm guessing is he was in line. He was being manipulated by the Wendigo itself. That could be. Because that's what I was guessing. Yeah. Because at the end, you notice that there's a little bit of uh, black stuff on his lip at the very end of the movie. Yeah. Yep. And then also, you notice that the cop guy, uh, I think his name was it Frank? Is it Frank? The teacher's brother. Yeah. I think it was. The sheriff. No, Paul. His name was Paul, the sheriff. He gets hit by the Wendigo earlier in the movie, but at the end, you see that he coughs up black stuff. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he's got a secret from his eye. Yes. Which, I don't know. It depends on how they want to go with it. He, he could be next in line, or it could just be they're affected by, like, the sickness. Well, Because it, it, do, it does inflect, you know. But the Wendigo spirit can't be destroyed. No. Right. So, of course, the Wendigo spirit would probably end up infecting yeah. or taking them over. Because it weakens the host. Which is a cool idea for the Wendigo. I like how they kind of combined it with a guardian spirit or, like, an ancestral spirit for the Native Americans. It was cool... But at the same time, like, if you go off lore, technically as rapid as they went with everything of this, the town should be basically overrun with Wendigos. Because <laughs> it doesn't kind really, of? it doesn't really pass, like, in Legends, it doesn't really pass yeah. on, it's just, here's a new Wendigo. Yeah. Which is where you get, like, the story of the two Wendigo brother hunters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was interesting. So, it's like, I guess it would depend on how they did it. Yeah. I would be interested to know... Because I know this movie got kind of half and half reviews if they plan on making more of them or at the very least if they're going to be doing basically a line of movies where it's lesser known or just currently popular monsters. I yeah. don't know if they're going to do another one because of the mediocre reviews, reviews yeah. and score because it's it's just at like on Rotten Tomatoes at 60%. It did do That's this. That's pretty good nowadays. It is. But to get another movie yeah. in these days. IMDb has it at a uh, six, 6 out of a 10. Yeah. It's right over the half and half. Yeah. It did do this much, I hope. I hope. Of making Wendigo's more of a topic for monster movies. Yeah, Which, I just hope they don't get turned into the next werewolf, though. I mean, internet-wise, they kind of are. Yeah, but I I don't know the werewolves were kind of more romanticized. Yeah, I, they were because they went from creepy the... pasta Wendigos are still held as like apex predator, like horrifying things. Yeah, but I think probably all right. So with the internet kind of setting the pop, well, no, kind of about setting the popularity of stuff. Yeah, I think kind of especially in this time where Hollywood is like had its leg like, blown out from underneath it because of things obviously going on in the world um i think they're probably gonna start grasping more for stuff like that so we're gonna probably see more wendigo movies right. skinwalker mo themed movies mm -hmm. things like that i'd like to see that that'd be cool oh i would too i just i think that's what we're gonna see more of and it yeah. would be cool because what that means at some point somebody's gonna be like hey i want to do a wendigo movie that's really accurate to lore and here here's my thing yeah, that would be so that, really cool. And that's then, what I'm hoping. That's to see. when I'd like to see it back in like the 1800s or the 1600s, or something like, that bounces back and forth. Yeah, that, that would be really that cool. would be cool. Like telling two stories, basically, of the person who locked it away to the person who's now dealing with it in the present. Yeah. But yeah, um, I think that's about it. Um, what? Let's go over our overall thoughts. What I can say because I was, I get this thing where. Especially with like cars, making sure that I'm somewhat right. I can say the movie is around 2016. Yeah. I can say for a fact because that police car is around the 2016 era. 
I'm also pretty sure they have just 2016 written on the documents in the hospital when they show. They might documents. have. That'd be interesting to look back and see. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. What was I talking about? Uh, Our summary own things. and thoughts. Right. Our <laughs> final conclusions. Uh, Terry. Yes. Why don't you go? Uh, I liked it. I would have liked it even better if it was stuck closer to the lore. I liked the atmosphere. I liked the design characters. I liked as far as surface level characters go. They're decent horror movie villains. It, or not villains. Um, <laughs> char- characters. Antagonists. Yeah, they're decent, but they could have used just a tad bit more build. Yeah. So if something happened to them, you actually cared about what happened to them. Because in this case, like... The brother got hurt. I really could have cared less because he's yeah. just a character. Yeah, right. I didn't really care when any of the people died. Yeah, they were just a random or person. Lived. There was no thing to really make you like, no. Other than the sheriff. I liked the sheriff. Yeah. I liked him, but I would have liked him better if I knew a little bit more about if you got him. Yeah. If, you seen, if you got to see him do more sheriff stuff. Yeah, more sheriff stuff. See why people like him or what, you know, or not like him or Because I believe like he that. just became sheriff that year or the year before. Yeah, something like that. And it would have been nice to see things like he makes the comment about, well, I have to go and evict these people out of their houses like the however many of this week yep it would have been kind of nice to see that and see how the town falling apart affected him yeah in a way you know kind of like the teacher was dealing with trauma Mm -hmm. of family life and also it would have been nice i think to see rather than just hear it actually see a little bit more of this town is suffering yeah, that would that would kind of add to the atmosphere a little bit more. Yeah. All right, uh, Jordan, what do you think? It was okay. I didn't. I didn't. I enjoyed it, and that's kind of about it. Like I would have liked to see it because it felt like they were kind of trying to stay closer to the original legend, but with doing that, they, at least for me. They should have kept closer than what they did. They should have either picked more Hollywood style or lore style. Okay. Instead of trying to um, skirt the line. Skirt the line. Because like at the end when they have to kill the heart. Yeah. And he says it has a heart of it's a burning heart. And all almost all the Wendigo stories and legends, the Wendigo's heart is ice cold. Sometimes it's just frozen. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I guess I could see it being burning, but if you're trying to stay like with the legend about having to destroy its heart, why not just keep it with the frozen heart? And you can even even kind of like depict that with like a glowing, a nice blue, deep, um, frost blue yeah. glowing heart instead of the red. And like I said, I think that might be just like a production or like a look, an art design. Mm -hmm. Say they really liked going for like the fiery sparks, sparks, like the little uh, embers, embers floating. floating. Yeah. And like also, also kind of like how it was designed with it. I get, I get that the movie was called Antlers, but they went with the, um, it's not bipedal, but the walking on all fours. I forget what that's called. It's not bipedal. Anthro? Uh, just walking on four <laughs> legs. <laughs> yeah, it has a word. But they had it had them where it was walking on all four legs. Okay. And like I said earlier, it kind of came more off like a moose to me. Yeah, where a lot a of modern depictions are like the Wendigo is just this tall, super lanky thing. It's got arms that can just like reach out and snatch stuff off. And like right. with like modern depictions, it has the head of a deer. The yeah. deer skull. It kind of had that. It, it was... had the deer head, but it also was walking on all fours. Yeah. Not all the time. Not all the time. It's like but... an ape. Kind of, yeah, but you never really got to see it not walk on all fours. Well, because a lot of times it was charging people. Yeah. It acted more like a moose. It kind of did, yeah. That's the thing that threw me off the most is like when it's attacking the people in the shed, it's just ramming its head into it. Yeah. Original title for it, pitch, Moose Ape the movie. (laughs) It kind of felt like that. (laughs) I just kind of wish that either they stuck to more of the traditional stories or just went full on 
Hollywood um, Reddit story Wendigo. I mean, most Reddit stories stick closer to the original legend, so. Yeah. Yeah, but they also do twist it a lot. Yeah, they do. All right, so is that what you got? Yeah. Okay. So I kind of think I really like the movie. I really like the way they went. It was, After, it was fun. Yeah, looking into the backstory of it a little bit more, I like um, the art style they went. I like the artistic way they went with it. I see it more as like a mental movie where it's more meant just to be like very suspenseful. And then like the end is where you defeat the monster, but the monster never really was the... Uh, like it was a focus, but it like the monster itself wasn't the problem. It was more like what was happening to the kid, the kid and his father and stuff. Yeah, which I think is where they kind of went the wrong way because it felt yeah. like they shifted from the suspense of what's happening to the kid's family to the oh, it's just a monster now. Let's kill it. I yeah. think they also and this just hit me when you were saying that. Another reason why I guess I didn't really like it is they missed out the actual meaning of the wendigo where it's like don't be selfish don't be greedy greedy Mm -hmm. and stuff like that yeah yeah because this very much could have been the play on the dad basically sacrifice not even sacrificing taking everything even from his family in a sense even with like being the drug but dealer, in all yeah. in actuality, like he was just it was a mishap. He got yeah. hit by the Wendigo. Yeah, but then he was selfless all the way until the end. And the way yeah. it's being depicted too is he was doing they're making the drugs because he didn't have any work. Yeah, and he had two kids to take care of. So yeah. it's like it kind of flipped. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was a really fun movie. I would suggest people watching it. Yeah, I would. Um, probably rent it or wait for it to become on a streaming service. Don't yeah. buy it. Don't I wouldn't suggest to buy it unless you're really big into Wendigos and yeah. just want to watch it. Yeah, if I found it for five bucks on a shelf, I'd probably buy it. Yeah, I would too. Just to add to my collection. I mean, I'm not sad I bought it. But... If I collected <laughs> movies, I would. But I thought it was really good. So, uh, yeah, and with that, that is our... That's the end of the talk review. On the Wendigo. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, It's a little bit different than what we normally do. But... Yeah. As you can kind of tell with one aspect of the podcast, we're kind of changing things up here around here a little bit. So I, I jiggled the switch too much. <laughs> we kind of were talking at the end of 2021, and we kind of decided that we want to do things a little bit different around here. We, we're still going to do the paranormal and supernatural talks and stuff, but maybe not go as in depth but we'll we'll bring more information about that in a supplemental episode oh so we are doing it in the supplemental yeah. yes but i do want to explain that we main thing we're going to change and this might be the biggest thing for most people is you won't want, no longer have to hear us say our Thank you. weird online names uh we're just going to use our actual names of course we're not going to tell you our full names but because we're still not too sure about that, I guess. You don't need to know my last name. <laughs> the way you said that was just like, ah. I just seen his FBI suit. <laughs> you don't need to know my name. But yeah, so of course, I guess. If you just, haven't If you're realized, still confused, Jordan is Jay Wolf. Or just Wolf as everyone's yeah. know him. Terry is Ramen Cat. You. And then of course, I am Jake. So yeah. Hi. Hello. We are ourselves now. So we are speak for bunch. yourself. This is my disguise name. You got more creepier. <laughs> At least he kind of dropped the um blanket. Uh, no, it was more or less you being cuddled up in a blanket I am like a ball a, of a comfort right now. <laughs> you were kind of like an occultist. You had the blanket over your head, and you were just like. Anyways, so yeah, we're gonna change things up around here. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Uh, give us some suggestions on maybe some more movies you want us to talk about. If you want us to talk about some movies, or we got lots of ideas. So movies, video games, food. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be just paranormal. We kind of realized that we want to do broaden our perspectives a little bit. We don't want to just be sitting in one little tiny box. Yes. So if you like us for the one little tiny box, that's not going away totally. It's just not going to be the only thing we do. So. Yeah, and we're not going to go as how we have in the past where we've gone 
diving straight into each topic yeah. just fully. But like I said, we will go into the dirty details about yeah. that in a supplemental episode. So anyways, this has been Look Behind You and the Look Behind You review of Antlers. I have been uh, Jake, and you can find me on Twitter at SirBoom9. Um, with me has been Jordan. Hello. And you can find him at our podcast account on Twitter, Twitter which or... is Behind You Pod. Yep. And then my other co-host, 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 is Ben Terry. Narf. Co-host in the house. And you can find him at RobinCat13 on Twitter if he's ever on the internet again. I, I don't know. I kind of just like forgot the internet existed this whole week. and it That fe- must have been so nice. It was different. Yeah. I have family. <laughs> You've always had family. You just didn't realize it. I just didn't realize it. Wait that, until you realize that you've had three kids and you didn't realize that. Yeah, that still hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I don't know if you're ready for that, bud. Eh, I just need, eh. a, I need a house. <laughs> Anyways, um, and then, of course, if you want to contact the podcast itself, you can uh, look up Behind You Pod on Twitter. You can also give us a review on iTunes or Spotify or Podchaser. You can also leave us a comment or you can give us suggestions on YouTube where our oh yeah we have YouTube, a YouTube. channel is Be um, Look Behind You. Oh, yes. Please give us a subscription because I want to get above 10 subscribers. That would be amazing. I mean, that's everyone's goal on YouTube. Yes, to get above 10. Yes. (laughs) I have simple goals. (laughs) Set Um, it for 10, set it for 20, set it for 30. 15 likes. And then, of course, you can can email us at behindyoucast at gmail.com. And there you can give us ideas, movie suggestions, uh paranormal or supernatural topics to talk about or a story or a story and yeah that'd be great jordan still has not gotten his pickles it's less weird now to demand pickles yes because yeah. jordan gonna... himself has always been into pickles he yes. has in a really weird and creepy way it's not weird or creepy <laughs> they're good for you he just has jars of pickles on his wall suspended in animation that is a total and utter if you lie. think about it that is what pickling is it is suspending something in a viscous liquid and suspended animation the liquid's called vinegar <laughs> anyways this has been look behind you we hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you all later bye bye And don't forget to look behind you, because you never know what you see. (laughs) See ya.